Imagine winds so powerful they could tear concrete from its foundation, shred steel beams like paper. What if the most violent tornadoes we've recorded are just the beginning? Tornadoes are nature's most violent storms, capable of flattening neighborhoods in seconds. But even the worst tornadoes in history, the ones that destroy skyscrapers, toss trains like toys, or kill hundreds of people, only reached EF5 strength. Today, we're diving into the controversial question that's been swirling through storm chaser communities and meteorological circles. Could a tornado ever reach the hypothetical EF6 strength? And what would happen if it did? The enhanced Fujita scale currently tops out at EF5, reserved for tornadoes with winds exceeding 200 miles per hour, causing incredible damage. But some documented twisters have pushed these boundaries with estimated wind speeds far beyond what the scale accounts for. So why hasn't an EF6 category been added? And could climate change make these super tornadoes more likely in our future? Understanding the Tornado Rating System Before we can talk about breaking the scale, we need to understand how tornadoes are rated. The original Fujita scale was developed in 1971 by Dr. Theodore Fujita to classify tornadoes based on the damage they cause. But this system had limitations. In 2007, meteorologists introduced the Enhanced Fujita Scale, which provides more detailed guidelines for rating tornadoes based on damage indicators. The EF scale ranks tornadoes from EF0 to EF5, using damage to estimate wind speeds. Scientists survey the aftermath to piece together how powerful the tornado was. EF0 starts at 65 to 85 miles per hour winds. Broken tree limbs, shallow rooted trees knocked over, and minor roof damage like missing shingles. EF1 jumps to 86 to 110 miles per hour. Roofs lose tiles or sections and windows crack. Fences topple, and lightweight objects turn into projectiles. EF2 tornadoes hit 111 to 135 miles per hour. Now we're cooking. Roofs torn completely off houses, exterior walls collapse, and cars slide or flip over. Large trees snap or get uprooted. EF3 ramps up to 136 to 165 miles per hour. Well-built homes lose entire roofs and walls. Trains overturn. Heavy debris flies. EF4 strikes with 166 to 200 miles per hour. Houses leveled to piles of rubble, cars thrown long distances, EF5 is the maximum destruction at 200 plus miles per hour. Strongly built homes swept clean off foundations, steel reinforced buildings collapse, and skyscrapers sustain severe damage. But here's the catch the scale stops at EF5. There's no official EF6 yet. A tornado with 250 miles per hour winds and one with 300 plus miles per hour winds would both be classified as EF5, despite potentially massive differences in destructive power. So why do people talk about EF6? Because the EF scale isn't perfect. It relies on damage surveys, not direct wind measurements. If a tornado hits a rural area with weak structures, it might look less powerful than it really was. Scientists call this the rating ceiling problem. Imagine a tornado with 250 mile per hour winds tearing through an empty field. Without sturdy buildings to shred, it might get labeled EF3. But what if those same winds hit a major city? To understand EF6, we need to rewind to 1974. The original Fujita scale did include an F6 category, described as inconceivable damage. But meteorologist Ted Fujita himself admitted it was purely theoretical, like a what-if for doomsday scenarios. When the scale was updated to the EF system in 2007, F6 was dropped. The Most Powerful Tornadoes Ever Recorded Throughout history, several tornadoes have displayed such extreme power that they've made meteorologists question whether the current scale is sufficient. The Bridge Creek Moor Tornado 1999. 
this Oklahoma giant produced one of the highest officially measured wind speeds ever recorded on Earth at 302 miles per hour. Despite winds being stronger than the EF5 threshold, it was still just classified as an F5, using the older scale that was in place at the time. The Gerald Texas Tornado, 1997 This devastating F5 tornado had estimated wind speeds of 318 miles per hour and left almost nothing in its path. Witnesses reported concrete torn from foundations the destruction was so complete in some areas that it's difficult to comprehend how anything could survive. The El Reno, Oklahoma Tornado, 2013 This monster holds the record for the widest tornado ever documented at 2.6 miles across. That's wider than some small towns, with wind speeds potentially exceeding 336 miles per hour according to some estimates it would seem like a prime candidate for an EF6 rating. Yet surprisingly, this tornado was officially rated only as an EF3. Why? Because tornado ratings are based on the damage they cause to structures, not their measured wind speeds. The El Reno tornado primarily tracked through rural areas, so despite its incredible power, it didn't encounter enough damage indicators to warrant a higher rating. What would make a tornado EF6? So if these monsters weren't enough for a hypothetical EF6 rating, what would it take? Based on the pattern of the EF scale, an EF6 tornado would likely need sustained winds of at least around 350 miles per hour. At these speeds, the level of destruction would be almost unimaginable. Has an EF6 tornado ever been officially designated? Despite internet rumors, no tornado has ever been officially classified as an EF6 or F6 under the old scale. There was one brief exception during the super outbreak of 1974, when a tornado in Zania, Ohio, was temporarily rated as an F6 with wind speeds of 260 miles per hour. The rating was later adjusted to F5, and no tornado has been officially rated above the top category since. Why doesn't the EF6 category exist? There are several reasons why meteorologists haven't extended the scale. The current EF5 category has no upper wind limit, so technically it already accommodates any tornado regardless of strength. The differences in damage might be academic. Both would cause catastrophic, unsurvivable destruction. And the enhanced Fujita scale is primarily a damage scale not a wind speed scale. As one user on Reddit put it, EF5 means there's nothing left to destroy. EF6 would require destroying the destruction itself. For now, EF5 remains the king of destruction. And honestly, let's hope it stays that way.